Hosea chapter 12. Ephraim feedeth on wind. Not a very good diet. And followeth after the east wind. The east wind usually brings all kinds of weather and disaster. He, Ephraim, daily increase lies. Almost like the campaign trail of America. And desolation. Lies and desolation. And they do make a covenant with the Assyrians. That's who's going to come in. And take Israel away. And oil is carried into Egypt. Trade relations. They're doing business with the people who are not of God. There's ill Gentiles. But the money and the oil is good, isn't it? The Lord... Has a controversy with Judah. Oh, let's go back down to Judah now. Can't leave. They've been left out a little bit in the book. And will punish Jacob. That's all of them all together. You can't say, well, that limits our tribe. That's the 12 boys that came from Jacob. According to his ways, according to his doings, will he recompense him. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. And those boys, I tell you, and Jacob got in all kinds of trouble, didn't they? One slept with, with his mother. Two of them killed a city. They uh, took their brother and swindled him away. Lied to their father. And sold them. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. This is Jacob and Esau. And by his strength he had power with God. Jacob. Yea, he had power over the angel. That's when he wrestled. He halted on his side and prevailed. What we're doing is we're doing a real quick uh, condensed version of Jacob's life. With all the blessings that Jacob got from God. God is telling the, the, Jacob and, and the children in Judah and Israel, I, I've been with you since the beginning. He wept. And made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel. And there he spank with us. Even the Lord God of hosts. The Lord is his memorial. Remember Jacob built an altar there. Then he rebuilt the altar there. And rededicated his life after he was come back. And he told the Lord when he left, this place is called the house of the Lord. And if you bring me back, I'll tithe and I'll do what you want. Every man should have had a Bethel in their life. The Bethel is where you first found God. Now you may not be able to go physically back to Bethel. Your Bethel may not be there no more. But you should have a spiritual Bethel where you go back to God. Therefore, turn thou to thy God. Like Jacob done. Keep mercy and judgment. And wait on thy God continually. There is a command of Hosea to Judah. And to all the children of Jacob. Repent, get right. Mercy and judgment and wait on God. He is a merchant. We just read about that in verse 1. The balances of deceit are in his hand. Proverbs 11, 1, Leviticus 19, 36, Deuteronomy 25, 13. He's cheating. 
He's swindling. The people are not getting what they're buying. I have found me out substance. In all my labors they shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. He's bragging. Ephraim is bragging that I am making a fortune. So go back to the balances of deceit are in his hand. He's loved through a press. See, he's deceiving the people and he's bragging in verse 8. That does not please God. And in verse 7 it says, He loveth to oppress. He's got deceitful wages. He's got deceitful balances. He's oppressing. And he said, Yet I am become rich. How? By lying, by deceiving, by oppression. I have found me out substance, money, goods, merchandise. In all my labor they shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. Wait a minute. He, he's completely left verse 7 out. In the life of Ephraim it, it would be, Therefore turn thou thy God, keep mercy and judgment, wait on the Lord continually. And Ephraim said, Yet I am become rich, I have found me out substance, in my labors they shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. That sounds great, doesn't it? Wow. But read verse 7 back into it. He is a merchant. Okay. So, he is a merchant. Ephraim said, I have become rich. Hey, see, he's doing business. And that's how, the, that's how human beings are. Hey, listen, I'm just selling my goods. I've I got to have a job here. I've got to have a market. I've got to make money. And look, I've got a business. And I'm, I'm rich. And I've got stuff. And hey. Okay. But in the eyes of God, the judgment seat of Christ. Or the great white throne judgment. How about this? What God has to say. The balances of deceit are in his hand. And he loveth the oppressed. Now, I've got a real controversy, and I don't know how much of a controversy it is. When you buy meat today, and you buy meat by the pound, such and such per pound, they know you ain't going to use that bone. But that bone is part of the weight. And I know a man who, who, who says, and I have no reason to disregard what he says and believe what he said, that he took a box of cereal, measured it out, and it was not what the box said. Are you really getting five gallons of gasoline when that meter says five gallons? We are in a lying, deceitful, balanced, oppressed country of democracy in God we trust on our money and you ask anybody who's in a business and 99% I'm not sinning I don't see anything wrong with what I'm doing look how rich I am see the idea is I'm rich so I must be good and I that and the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, see, God took them when they were in Egypt as his own, will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles, as in the days of the solemn feast. They're going to get back to God. They're going to get back to the law. You know what he just said there? You are not following what I told you to do. Didn't you read over and over in the law about the just balance? Didn't even God give a prescribed measurement of, of what a certain amount was to be a certain amount? And you just read that, oh, what's all that about? 
What about another unjust balance? All right, you, you get yourself something mechanical. Now you got to go buy a standard metric set. You got to have standard, you got to have metric. And well, to the fact is, if you got to work on your headlights, now you got to go get a special screwdriver. Now you need a Phillips screwdriver. You need a slot head screwdriver. You need a torque screwdriver. And you need to, you know. Oh, you can't work on that because you know you got you got to have a certified mechanic because no one else can do what the regular job is to be done. We made it impossible that you have to use our labor. So, and we'll even pass laws and everything now, so you have to do it the way we tell you to do it. I have also spoken by the prophets, inspiration. Now these are not the 450 prophets of of Jezebel of Baal. These are God's prophets like Hosea. I have multiplied visions because there was no complete written word. Hosea's got one more chapter, two more chapters left, and he has he doesn't have the complete version. They couldn't down in Judah open up the book of Hosea and read it. And use similitudes. Um, he would use the sun, Psalms 19, Malachi 4, the moon, Song of Psalms 6:10, night watches, Isaiah 21, 11 through 12, the stars, Daniel 12:3, the Sabbath, Isaiah 14:7, Second Peter 3:8, the fifth day of creation, Genesis 1:20, Second Peter 5:3:8. Revelation 20, 1 through 6. The Feast of Israel. Leviticus 23, 20. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A watchtower. A vineyard. A tree. Jesus spoke parables. He used illustrations. A man went out and cast seed upon the ground. By the ministry of the prophets. And that's how God worked the prophets in the Old Testament. Is there any iniquity in Gilead? Surely they are vanity. Regal Song of Psalms says that's about vanity. They're sacrificed bullocks. They sacrifice bullocks in Gilgal. Yea, their altars. What's wrong with that? There's no altar of God in Gilgal. Never mind altars. It's Jerusalem. The law forbid them just to offer a sacrifice anywhere where they wanted to. So we got a convenience. You don't have to go down to Jerusalem. Stop off at Gil Gilgal. Bring your sacrifice. Just as good as the real one. Isn't that what Gad and, and uh, I forget the other brother there that, that had their the land on the other side of Jordan? We made a great altar. Oh, we didn't use it for sacrifice. We did. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yea, their altars are as heaps in the furrows of the field. Oh, sacrificing to farm gods, harvest crops gods. You know, the gods of the Egyptians, a god for everything, a god for all. They said that when they didn't offer the cakes to the queen of heaven, she was causing all this problem for them. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria. Well, we went through all this and now we're back to Jacob again. You boys are not like your father. And your father was a swindler. Come on, brother. I'm about to die. Sell me your birthright. Art thou, art thou my son Esau? Yeah, it's me, Dad. Come on, hurry up and eat your, eat your venison. Please, hurry. Esau may come in the room. Art thou very my son Esau? Yeah, I am. Come on, Dad. Hurry up and eat. 
And the Bible says once Jacob blessed him and finished, man, he was scarce out of there. Jacob fled into the country of Syria. Why did he flee? The anger of his brother. And Israel served for a wife. Um, both to get Rachel, but he ended up with Leah. And he served another seven years for Rachel. And for a wife, he kept sheep. He became a shepherd. And by a prophet. Not a king, not a priest. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Moses. Moses wasn't a king, but he did serve the priest's office. And by a prophet was he preserved. Jacob. Who did all the praying when God got angry? Let's just step away. Let me just burn them all up. Moses stepped in. Lord, you know, if you if you do that, your enemy is going to say, hey, you couldn't even handle them. And the Lord repented. Imagine Moses standing up before God and, and God said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. Let me turn from. And yet that's what happened. God is reminding Israel their history. I could have killed Jacob. I could have killed you in the wilderness. I ain't going to kill you now. I'm just going to wipe you out. Ephraim. This whole chapter has been about Ephraim. Got to watch out for Utah and Ephraim. Provoke him to anger most bitterly. Quote that to your people over there in Utah. Like I said, get them a minute until a minute that they're from Ephraim, then just read Hosea to them. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him. Murder. Ephraim is killing people. And his reproach shall his Lord return unto him. You're going to get what you read. Now, judging by Hosea, would you really? I mean, we got two more chapters left. But would you really? If you're going to pick a person out of the Bible, would you pick Ephraim to be your, you know? I mean, you just might as well call yourself Judas. You just might as well say, hey, we're of Jezebel. Ephraim is not a very pleasant guy to start your religion on. Somebody didn't study their Bible. When you go through the book of Hosea, which Mr. Smith had, a complete King James Bible, and his book of Mormon has passages of the King James Bible, and he chooses Ephraim. He didn't study his Bible because he would say, go through he Hosea. Oh, wait a minute. Erase Ephraim. Got to find a new name. Um, what, what child of Jacob is really less mentioned in the Bible? Huh, we're of Naphtali. You know, he's very less mentioned. You know? That'd be like, uh, you know, I'm going to start a, a Christian marriage counseling service and call it Reuben. You know, he's the one who slept with his, his, his father's mo mother. You know? The fact is, you picked yourself up with this guy named Ephraim. You, you did not study the Bible. 